every hobby and everything I've ever done, I'm not in it very long until I want to make my own stuff. I've just, I've always done it. If it was fly rods, uh, cedar strip canoes, anything I can think of, I wasn't happy with it until I was making my own for some reason. For Scott Mitchell, it's a habit that developed early in life alongside a love of the outdoors. Case in point, when he was just six or seven, he wanted to go bow hunting with the rest of the family. Only problem, Scott didn't have the right gear. For some reason, the idea of buying a bow just never came up. I guess I said I wanted a bow, and Dad or somebody said, well, we'll go make one. They weren't much more than just bent saplings. When we got old enough to use some power tools, we, we made some better than uh, sapling bows, but maybe not a lot. <laughs> they just maybe looked a little bit better. It would be several more decades before Scott would graduate to the sort of bow he makes today. I built my first laminated glass and wood bow of the sort of the style, at least you see here, in uh, 1988. It was inspired by a book he had picked up, all about traditional, even primitive, archery. And I read that and thought, that doesn't look so hard. It was harder than I thought, but I decided to make one. Today, Timberhawk Bows, formed back in 1999, offer several models, all some form of laminated glass and wood bow. Meaning that the, the limbs, the part that bends on the bow, is a sandwiched layer of uh, fiberglass with wood in between it. There's all kinds of styles of that and different combinations, but in, essentially that's the main component. Along with the limbs, everything's made right here in northern Lawrence County. The riser, or handle, is milled and shaped. The various layers for the limbs are cut and sanded with precision in mind. That's probably the, the most exacting part is building that, and that's because the weight is so easily changed uh, with that thickness. A lesson Scott learned with the very first bow laminated he made in the late 80s. It was, it was a little tough. I've still got it. Haven't ever shot it. <laughs> Can't pull it back. <laughs> Once the limbs are dialed in, the bows are assembled and further shaped with power tools and finally by hand. And when all said and done, what are they used for? Well, that varies. 10, 15 years ago, I would have said 95% of them use them to hunt with. That's not really true at all anymore. It's probably getting close to half of what I make now is for people who just want to target shoot. On mine particularly, there's not many that are bought just to put on the wall. And for Scott, that's just fine. I want to know people are using it, enjoying it. And Timberhawk customers will be glad to know that Scott's enjoying the process as well. Some people ask me a lot of times, don't, don't you get tired of just making bows all the time? It's not really. They're, they're different. Every time I make one, it's something different. But it's not an easy process, and some have suggested utilizing CNC or some other form of automation. Being hands-on with every bow that goes out the door is important to Scott. I guess as long as I still sign all the checks, <laughs> that's the way I'm going to have to do it for a while longer yet. I try to make sure that everyone is just as perfect as we can make it.